Okay, the law of signs. What is it? Uh, and why does it work? In other words, can we prove that it's actually true? Okay, law of signs. First of all, again, what is it? Well, it says that in any triangle, it does not need to be right triangles. And that's one of the keys here, compared to normal sine, cosine, and tangent. This does not need to be a right triangle. So we've got the law of sines. Let's name the sides of our triangle. Let's call that angle A, let's call this angle B, and let's call this angle C. Now, let's name the side opposite angle A, lowercase a. Let's name the side opposite angle B, lowercase a. B, and name the side opposite angle C, lowercase c. So notice that our side lengths here are lowercase letters, and they match up to the letter of the angle that is opposite from them. And the angles are indicated using capital letters. So what is the law of sines? Well, it basically says that if you do the sine of an angle and divide it by the side length across from it, that should be equal to the sine of any other angle in the triangle. Like I could pick B, and I could divide it by the side across from it. That's what it says. Notice that I could easily, in this case, have replaced the Bs with Cs. All that matters here is that we're saying that it's the sine of an angle divided by the opposite side from it. And those will always produce equal ratios. Those ratios will always be equal. Now, why is that the case? In other words, can we prove that this is always true? Well, hmm, L let's see. I think the idea here is that we're gonna need to do sine, and normally we do that in right triangles. So let's get ourselves a right triangle by drawing a line that I would think of as the height of this triangle if I was like calculating its area. So I'm gonna call that H. And now we have two right triangles. So what can we do? Do with this? Well, how about we do the sine of each side? You know what? Let's get rid of our formula for a minute, because let's say that we didn't already know that, right? We're trying to prove this thing. So what are we going to do? Let's look at the triangle on the right-hand side, okay? So this triangle, okay? Let's do sine of angle B and see what we get. If we do sine of angle B, that would be equal to, remember sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's gonna be the opposite side, side from angle B, which would be H, now that we're looking at that right triangle, and that would be divided by the hypotenuse of that right triangle, which would be A, okay? That's that. Now, let's solve this for the height. Okay, let's solve this for the height. How would we solve that for the height? Well, you would multiply both sides by A. Okay, so we're going to multiply both sides by A, and that's going to leave us with H is equal to A times sine of angle B. All right, we have the height by itself. Now, what is that good for? Well, let's actually do the same thing in this left-hand triangle, okay? So in this left-hand triangle that I'm highlighting in yellow, let's do the exact same thing. We're going to do the sine of angle A, and that would be equal to its opposite side, which in the right triangle there would be H, divided by its hypotenuse, which would be B. And once again, we want, we're gonna solve for H. In other words, what we're doing here is we're figuring out what the height of this triangle is two different ways. And that's gonna help us out by putting these two things together. Well, let's, let's take a look. So we're gonna multiply both sides of this by B in order to get the h by itself. So we now have h is equal to b times sine a. Okay. So what do we have here? We have the height of this triangle represented two different ways, right? We have the height represented two different ways. Now, what can we actually do with that? Is that useful for anything? Well, let me, let me highlight this. h, right, h, is the same thing on both of these. And it's also the same thing as this, right? And it's the same thing as this. These are all the same thing. They're all equal, which means that these two things are equal. Those two things are equal to each other. Now, I'm gonna, for the sake of space, move along up here. What I'm getting at here is that that means that B times sine A 
must be equivalent to A times sine B. And if we think about this geometrically, what does it actually mean? Like, what have we done here? We're basically getting at the idea that as, as, the, as the height of this triangle would change, the, the, the ratios going on here are varying proportionally with each other, right? Um, because the opposite side would increase and that other opposite side would increase as your angles increase. And it turns out these actually, uh, you know, produce the same ratio, and that's why they're both equal to that height. That's like a geometric, like, intuitive way of thinking about this. If that doesn't make any sense to you, you can still follow the algebra and understand that if the algebra works out, this must always be true. Anyway, let's wrap this thing up here. We remember what that formula looked like at the start, right? It was written as two fractions because honestly, you could have left this as the law of sines. It means exactly the same thing. It's equivalent to the law of sines formula that we're used to. But normally, it's written as two fractions. You would simplify it by dividing the b off of both sides. That reduces to one and is irrelevant now, but you have to do that to both sides of your equation. That leaves us with sine a on this side equal to a times sine b over b on this side. And we're almost there, guys. One last little bit, which is uh, we don't want this a here. How are we going to get rid of that a? We're going to divide by it. Okay, so if we divide by a, this is going to reduce down to a 1. And we're going to have to do it to both sides of the equation, again, to keep two things equal. So that's going to leave us with sine a over a is equal to sine b over b. And that's it, guys. That is our law of sines formula, which means we have now not only talked about what is the law of sines, but why is it true? It's true because you could represent that height two different ways, and we can now substitute those values together. Two things equal the same thing. They are equal to each other. And then we just moved it around a little bit to look like two equal fractions here. Then uh, to actually use this formula, you would just substitute an angle and its opposite side into each of those fractions and cross multiply. Now you might be wondering, well, would this also equal sine C over C? Yes, the proof would be identical. Just imagine like, you know, uh, <laughs> you could rotate the triangle around a little bit, but th th this is good enough uh, for what we're doing here. I'm gonna end the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And if you're interested in other math help videos, think about liking or subscribing to the channel. Have an excellent day.